Morning. Welcome to your Tuesday morning meeting. I'm Dr. Robin McKay, and today we are talking about ADHD at work. And specifically, I'm going to be sharing with you some strategies, some insights, and even kind of some behind the scenes things that, that go on with people who have ADHD who experience time blindness. So if you are with me live, say hello in the comments so I can say hi back. And if you are watching the recording, do the same. I love to circle back in and see who's listening and how you're, how you're benefiting from this content. If you like it, share it. If you are learning something from it, tell me about it so that I can give you more of what is making sense for you. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and dive in. And on our Tuesday morning meetings, the other thing that I want to do is to um, set up some, just some time of mindfulness for us as well. And I need to ask for your patience just for a second. I need to, I'm going to mute myself real quick. All right. I just got a notification on my end that something was going on with LinkedIn. It looks like it's been resolved, though. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So welcome. So let's start with a moment of mindfulness just to bring you into the present moment, into the here and now. That's where all of your creativity is. It's where your imagination resides. And it's a place where we can practice non-judgment, curiosity, open-heartedness, and open-mindedness in the service of whatever we're talking about today. And as I said, today, we're talking about time blindness and ADHD at work. So go ahead and breathe in love and grace and breathe out everything that doesn't serve you. And just do that just a couple of times. You might have 17 tabs open on your internet browser. Um, but even if you do, just bring your attention back into the present moment. And what I would like to start today with is just a reflection question for you. Not everybody is going to be attracted to this content. Not everybody has ADHD. Not everyone knows someone who has ADHD, although I think that's changing, certainly. And not everyone is timeline. In fact, I find that people who have neurotypical brains, who have a good awareness of time, who are always on time or early, often have quite a bit to say about those of us who experience time blindness. So we're going to, um, we're going to dive deeper into that in just a minute as well. As we do, I like to define terms. I think that's important. So we're all on the same page about uh, what that actually even means. I think we have a general sense of it, but I do think it's important to, um, to take a look at. So I have my hand, my phone here. So let me just read this description of time blindness. Time blindness is the inability to sense the passing of time and it can make nearly every aspect of a person's life more difficult. The important thing to understand is that it's more than a sensory issue and it is not an intentional disregard for time. It's not an intentional disregard for time. So I want you to think about if you've experienced time blindness yourself which I have, you know, I'm a, I'm a psychologist and I happen to have ADHD as well. And certainly time blindness has been something that I have wrestled with and, you know, in some ways come to terms with in my life, because whether we like it or not, the world still runs on time and we have schedules to keep, we have appointments to keep and so on. And I find myself even now, even after all these years, bumping up against time, not enough time. Just even as an example, this morning, as I was getting ready, I looked at my, my clock, I had plenty of time to do hair and makeup. And then three minutes before I'm to go live, I look around and I can't find Cooper, Cooper, my golden doodle puppy. So now I've got this extra thing I have to do that I didn't build in time to 
look around to find Cooper. I didn't anticipate that he was going to be disappearing. I actually found him. He was just curled up on the couch, which is so unlike him. I'm not sure what's going on there. But nonetheless, it was just a, a moment for me to be able to, in real time, experience that press against, I promised I would be here at 8.30 Pacific time. And I think I was 8.31 when I finally got logged in and everything. So I think that that's just something that I have come to terms with in some ways, but also it continues to be something that is an ongoing awareness that I have about my relationship with time. And maybe that's the case for you too. Maybe if you don't have ADHD, but you're here listening to this, you have people in your life who do have ADHD, who report into you, who are your peers, your colleagues, even family members. Certainly that's the case for me as well. Both my husband and I have ADHD. So you can imagine the the time blindness that shows up in our house on a pretty regular basis. That being said, I think that there are a couple of things that I want to talk to you about today. One is that, you know, this whole notion of time is very much an industrial age concept in my mind. If you remember hearing stories or even when you maybe you, you were a kid and you got your first job. It was usually a dollars per hour situation where you went in, you punched a time clock, you did your work, and then on the way out you punched your time clock so that your boss knew how much to pay you based on the amount of time you just spent doing the tasks that you had been assigned to. And while that for hourly workers, for people who are working in dollars per hour positions probably still makes sense. For those of us who are either self-employed, we are uh, business owners or you're corporate leaders who are on a salaried contract, salaried for 40 hours a week, let's say, the likelihood of you actually putting in only 40 hours a week is pretty slim to none. And so, you know, from a, a dollars and time perspective, what we're looking at is it doesn't even really make sense to keep track of our time when it comes to work anymore, because you just work until you get the job done. That's the, that's kind of the unspoken contract I think many of us are, um, are operating under. When the pandemic happened and we all got sent home, one of the things that I noticed and realized as a leader who was supporting other leaders in the corporate space in terms of leading their way through this big time of uncertainty that we um, have experienced and continue in some ways to experience is I've said that we need to recalibrate our relationships with time, money, and work. And so in some ways, the people who have ADHD have already been recalibrated to their relationship with time. It's a different sense of time that we have. People with ADHD, remember, are also typically pretty creative. In other words, there's research that's, that really supports that the diagnostic criteria for ADHD and the characteristics of the creative personality are basically two sides of the same coin. So often when an adult wants to be evaluated for ADHD, what I also recommend is they get evaluated for creativity as well. So we want to have both sides to that coin acknowledged as they are seeking respite from some of the symptoms that they experience with ADHD. One of those I don't know if it's a symptom, but it certainly is an experience of people with ADHD is time blindness. One of the challenges of time blindness is that literally there is no sense of time. There's more of a sense of timelessness, if anything. So people with ADHD like myself, and I speak by the way, and I know you know this, but I speak from the perspective of somebody who has ADHD but also professionally has worked with people with ADHD and other twice exceptionalities in my, in my private executive coaching practice for years and years. So I have this kind of two pronged perspective on this, on this um, brain difference that many of us are experiencing. So with time, with regard to time, I guess what I want to say is that People with ADHD who have time blindness are 
terrible, and that includes myself, terrible at estimating how much time something's going to take. We always think we can get something done in the least amount of time possible. We intuitively know that we should be able to because we're bright enough to figure that out, but we forget to build in buffer time. We forget how long it actually takes to do something. And it doesn't seem to matter how much experience we have around estimating time. We always, and I know I'm speaking in always as in nevers, um, which is in absolutes and that's not, that's not always a great idea. But I would say speaking in broad strokes, this is a, this is a common theme among people with ADHD is just underestimating, chronically underestimating how much time it takes to get some, some place to do something. On the other hand, we chronically overestimate our ability to get something done in a short period of time. We chronically overestimate our ability to get someplace in a short period of time without maybe maybe accounting for traffic or construction or whatever it is that might mess up our, our tightly planned schedules. In the workplace where that showed up for me when I was working in corporate, I was a medical writer. I dealt in timelines all the time and I would agree to timelines and then I would find myself crunched at the end and have to ask for more time. It wasn't necessarily procrastination for me, but I will say this, that if it was procrastination, it was simply to give my, give my brain enough pressure of a deadline in order to engage it so that it could produce the thing that I needed it to produce. So I used time or limited amount of time as a pressure cooker for my creativity, for my productivity. And maybe you do too. So there are some methods to our, to our time blindness that we use to our advantage in order to produce and get things done at work. Unfortunately, the, the unintended consequence of that is that our colleagues who don't have ADHD misunderstand our need to press time. They misunderstand why we're procrastinating. And this is not in all cases, but I think in a lot of cases, they really question, why are you procrastinating? Why don't you just get started on something? What's going on with you that you can't just get to work? And while there are many, I'll call them hacks and psychological strategies out there in the, in the social media realm, to support people with ADHD and overcoming time blindness. That's not what I wanna talk about. I'll, I'll give you some of those, but what I really wanna talk about is the, the psychological impact of having those projections placed on you over and over and over again. Because this is something that is a regular occurrence when you've got ADHD and you're working in a corporate space. I just had to change positions that I was remembering. There's a meme about people with ADHD sitting in wonky positions. And I certainly, I certainly have that characteristic for sure. I always have to move around, shift things around so that I can feel comfortable. Um, so what happens over time when you're chronically underestimating how much time it takes to complete something, chronically overestimating your ability to complete something in a very short period of time, you start to inadvertently create a story for other people about who you are and how you do things. And other people can create judgments and projections that I would say psychologically, even energetically can get lodged in your heart, can be pretty um, damaging to on the soul level, on the energetic plane to people with ADHD. I mean, how many times before you're wounded do you have to hear that you just don't care, that you're lazy, that you're unprofessional, that you're disrespectful, that you're careless? How many times do you have to hear that before it actually starts to affect how you view yourself as a person 
and how you operate in the world. Not very many. In fact, the neuroscience is pretty clear that it takes five positive affirmations or interactions to neurologically make up for every negative interaction or every negative piece of feedback. So just by knowing that, even if you're getting like a one-to-one, -one, oh, you did a great job on this, but you should have started earlier. You did a great job on this, but think about what you could have done if you would have built in enough time to review it first. So even if you're at a one-to-one -one ratio of positive affirmations to negative feedback, your nervous system is still in deficit around how you're feeling about yourself, how you're feeling about your work, how you're feeling about other people. So we have to understand that whether you're somebody who has ADHD and time blindness or you're somebody who works with people who have ADHD and time blindness and you happen to not, is that remember that people who are time blind don't miss time deliberately. It's not a mindful decision that we make to be late. In fact, I hate being late. In fact, the amount of psychological resources that are required for me to get someplace on time are quite significant, quite significant. The stress it places on my, on my physical system, on my psychology, and I know I'm not alone with this. I'm just sharing my experience because I think it's important for us, even though I can mask it pretty well, the pressure to be on time is external for the most part. And it's also internalized too, because I do want to be respectful. I do want to account for other people's time. I want to, I want to be mindful of their time as well. So you can start to see that there's this inner tension between being externally motivated to respect other people, because I think a lot of us um, have that desire. I don't think that there are many people who deliberately and intentionally say, I really just don't care about somebody else's time. But there is a that, that tension of, I care about other people's time, but I also am time blind. So how do I make that work? How does that work for me? <laughs> One of the things that happens when I work from home is sometimes Cooper gets overly excited or distracted by something outside. So I like to just mute so that you don't have to endure his barking. <laughs> so the idea here is that what I really want to bring awareness, to bring the spotlight to today is the inner turmoil that time blindness can create for somebody who has ADHD. Not so that you can rescue them, by the way. Not so you can rescue them, but so that you can understand that that's actually the inner game that a lot of us are playing with ourselves. And it doesn't always feel like a game. It feels pretty serious, actually. It feels like something that once again, once again, I'm going to screw this up. Once again, I'm going to be late for something. Once again, I'm going to be riding in on the, on, you know, by the skin of my teeth to something that I'm, that I'm supposed to be doing. And for those of you who wonder like, well, why don't you just wear a watch? Why don't you just set a timer? Um, I think those are, those are fine strategies to use. I have found I'm about 50% better if I'm, if I set a timer, but even then I'll miss my timer. I'll miss the, the notifications on my phone, especially when I'm in flow. And flow is that consciousness state where you lose track of time. You become completely absorbed and engaged in the activity. Your mind is being challenged. You're being creative. You're downloading something that benefits other people that is for the, for the good of the work that you're doing. And then forget it. I can work through anything. And maybe you can too. So part of this effort on my part today is to bring some awareness to time blindness within the corporate community. I think that this is very important because there are, in fact, in my experience, a lot of people who are not time blind. 
and who tell stories about those of us who are time blind. This is an opportunity for us to be more inclusive and understanding about people's invisible disabilities. I use the word disabilities. We can also put plug the word differences, invisible differences into, into the conversation as well. Um, a lot of us are quite good at masking it. I mean, you don't get as far as you've gotten without being able to mask it to some degree. In fact, I would say I was talking to one of my clients yesterday who happens to also have ADHD and she is a uh, physician leader. And she said, well, I'm actually really good at judging time and I'm really bad at judging time. So there's this polarity that can exist as well. And I would agree with her. I know the end of a 50 minute hour, like cold. Think about it. How many hours did I sit with clients when I was working in psychotherapy for 50 minutes? I know exactly how long that hour is, right? I know exactly how long it takes to run a hundred meters because how many hundred meter dashes did I run throughout high school, middle school, high school, and college? A lot. So there are some ways that we're hyper aware of time and other way, ways that we have no awareness of time. And isn't that interesting? So here are a couple of things I want us to think about as we extend the conversation around time blindness and ADHD in the workplace. Remember I said, we need to start recalibrating our relationship to, with time to begin with. One of the ways that I like to do that is I just like to personify time and I just ask people and I want you to consider this for yourself. If time were a person, what kind of person would it be? I think that can tell you a lot about the work that needs to be done with your relationship with time. You can also look at what did I learn about time from my parents or my grandparents? There's never enough of it. I have to hurry all the time. We always have to rush. What were the things that you learned from your parents as well about time? And then you can look at societal and cultural understandings of time as well. I think that I might be wrong on this, but I think that for the most part, our concept of time is very based in Western industrial thinking. I know that there are cultures around the world who have a very casual, we'll call it casual, but a very, a very different relationship with time than somebody who was raised in Western culture and brought up through the industrial age, brought up to respond to bells and whistles, the beginning of the day, the end of the day, the beginning of class, the end of class. So as we start recalibrating our relationship with time, we also have to understand that there's a collective need to agree that we're gonna meet somewhere in some time. But having some flexibility with the people who may be late and wondering rather than assigning uh, a negative explanation to their behavior. Oh, she's just disrespectful. Oh, she's just lazy. Oh, she's not very conscientious. Rather than assigning those labels, I would invite you to look a little bit deeper than that, to get curious. What else might be going on with this person? It may be ADHD. It may be that, you know, they've got a couple of kids at home who require additional attention or support. It may be that she has a golden doodle puppy who gets lost in the house sometimes, right? There are all kinds of things that we can't plan for necessarily or predict or control, but show up when we are in our front facing roles as leaders in the corporate space. So I guess this is an invitation for all of us to be kinder and more gen gentle to each other, more understanding and curious about what's behind, what's behind the lateness, what's behind the time blindness. 
keeping in mind too, that there are going to be some people who don't choose to disclose that they have ADHD or may not even know that they do. I think more adults now than ever before are being diagnosed with it. But regardless, I think that there is an opportunity here, isn't there, to be present with the possibility that there's something else going on beneath the surface other than they're being disrespectful, rude, careless, unconscientious. And also understanding the amount of psychic or psychological energy it takes to get someplace on time. Which leads, which can lead to a depletion of energy that could be deployed in other places like in the creativity, in the innovation, in the relationship building. Because we do have, as humans, we have to replenish our energy stores. And if so much of the energy is being dedicated to just being someplace on time, ooh, I think we really need to rethink how we are, how we're managing that. How we're relating to time. The one thing I will say is this, when I put a lot of pressure on myself to be someplace on time and I'm late anyway, this is when for me, I really get sideways with myself. And I remember a long time ago when I was working um, as a therapist, I was also in therapy myself. That's something that we have to do as professionals is to have our own psychotherapy or work with our own psychologist. So I rolled into his office a little bit late from whatever I was doing during the day. And I roll in, and I sit down and I say, I'm so sorry, I'm late. And he looked at me with these compassionate and kind eyes. And he said, well, you're only a little late. And that just took all the sting and all the judgment and all the criticism out of my arrival time. And maybe if we just practice that, you're just a little late. You're just a little late. Maybe if we just practice that, that will soften things enough to open up conversations and to get real curious about, is there a better way? Is there a better way to do time than what I've been doing it up until this point? Thank you so much for being here with me today. I am Dr. Robin McKay. October is ADHD Awareness Month, and I am partnering with my colleagues in the corporate world to bring in this perspective on ADHD as somebody who has it herself and who is a psychologist. I have a PhD in psychology. I've worked with twice exceptional people my whole career. And um, I like to bring my perspective in and start teaching people different ways of relating to the diagnosis of ADHD as it, as it pertains to work. So if that's something you'd like to chat with me about, bringing me into your organization, shoot me an email. You can email me at robin, R-O-B-Y-N, at drrobinmckay.com. We will put that email address in the show notes. I still have a couple of days available for hour-long webinars, Q&As, consults with team members, consults with leaders about how we can be more understanding, inclusive, and invite belonging for people who have neurodiversity, including ADHD. I will see you next week on your next Tuesday morning weekend. Until then, make it a great week.